Hello and welcome you're watching BW Auto World. I am Utkarsh Agarwal. Well, the automotive industry is shifting gears and is quickly moving towards sustainability. Many automotive OEMs have chosen the path and many new players have also chosen the bandwagon. One such player is Teresa Motors and I'm joined by its founder and CEO, Mr. Rohan Shavan. He's with us today. Thank you so much for your time to BW. Pleasure. Uh, so I'll start uh, by asking you about the company first, what the company is about and what does it stand for? Yeah, so Tressa is uh, uh, designing heavy and medium electric vehicles. Uh, and uh, the name is taken from a Sanskrit word called Rasa Renu, which essentially means one third of a, a particle. It also means locomotive, it's also mobility. And uh, we're trying to make sure that India can move on the transportation uh, sector and uh, take the transportation sector to electric uh, future as soon as possible. Okay, so if I can ask about how was the company born, how was the journey been going? So. Yes, so uh, so I graduated in 2008 and nine. I started a company, but soon realized that if you don't own the IP, then uh, so anyone can come in tomorrow say that uh, the IP is not for you. You can't make your products anymore on top of it. So the big learning came from my earlier company where we were making computer tablets as well. In 2014, now I started a company with one of my friends. We started making uh, high power motors, and uh, the decision to make motors uh, came from the fact by seeing that even on the automotive, most of the engines are are they imported or uh, used from some other company. And electric motor is something where India has struggled for quite a bit. Uh, it took uh, took around six years to design a first actual flux motor. And uh, as people are going towards the green and the saving earth kind of connotation. Uh, we really have to see that the 3% of vehicles on the road, which is trucks, is causing 60% of pollution, 34% of carbon monoxide and other particulate matters as well. So not targeting uh, transportation industry first, if you want to, if you're talking about saving earth, it sounds hypocritical. We can be selling billions of ER two-wheelers, but that's not causing as much uh, problem as uh, 3 lakh trucks being sold every year. Hmm. So how was the idea born? So why only the electric uh, industry? So what was yes. the thought behind it? So uh, I'm a mechanical engineer uh, from an era where computers were not there, internet wasn't there. And uh, I, I used to have a big slam book of all the cars and automobiles which were getting launched. So automotive is something I really wanted to do. That's why I picked mechanical engineering, thinking that, okay, I can turn into a, uh, uh, someday I can make my own cars and vehicles. But while doing all of the study that we did with respect to how we should evolve, uh, how the consumers are actually treating the product, and uh, if anything can go wrong in a consumer product, can go wrong. So the product has to be really, really good. So electric vehicle became the target uh, of what we really wanted to do. But then the question was that, are they safe enough? Uh, can we, uh, can they give the kind of mileage we are looking for other vehicles also? Can, are they cheap enough? But again, the main question on top of that was like, which sector, which industry will, has the high, will have the highest impact? And that's where the transportation came in. So we decided to make something for transportation industry, but the driver was always in the focus for us. Our trucks are central driven. We are the first company in the country which has a central drive. Most of the accidents in truck happen sideways, so there's no way you can actually save the uh, driver inside a truck if there's a head-on collision. Last year, we lost 14,000 drivers. It became very important to design, think from a driver perspective. There's a 40% attrition of drivers in the country. They're paid 18,000 driving 18 hours a day, and it doesn't take a lack of sleep to not be able to focus on the road. It can be a fight with my wife also. It can just take my mind off and suddenly, oh, we have slammed on something. So we're designing something for the driver first. But in India, the question people ask is, Kitna deti hai? So we're also making sure that our trucks are some of the uh, best TCOs possible and does as best uh, break even possible while designing components in house because that's the key. So the motors, the motor controllers, the battery pack, and the whole e axle is designed in house. As you've talked about the designs, we'll come to that part later because the truck really looks quite interesting. Yes. But uh, if you can tell about more details about the product, you are going to unveil your first uh, electric uh, truck. So what more details are about? Yes. So uh, the current version is called V01. Uh, a couple of months back, we released a V0 version. So it's just like a software you're going to see continuous evolution of the trucks that we're making. And the idea is that we are focusing on a Delta improvement strategy where every product comes with something uh, something more, which allows us to take it to our partners and see how the truck is now behaving, how have we improved the problem that we're solving. Because there are literally 100 problems to solve and we can't be solving all at the same time. So the first problem that we want to solve is on the drive drivetrain and the battery side. Now, the moment we achieve that, then we have more energy and focus left on making sure the rest of the companies are also working. Now, the current product is powered by uh, Flux 220 motors, which are 220 kilowatt peak performance motors. They are liquid cooled, and these motors run at 800 volt. All, all our truck architecture is built around 800 volt. And uh, 
the the battery capacity is also uh, the battery is also uh, on the 800 volt and we have a 50 kilowatt modules our trucks just like a mobile phone can be added with an extra uh, sd card in a mobile phone for example in our truck you can buy a truck with one module and add five later on on the 18 ton so we have two two uh, two products 18 ton and 55 ton and all the products in range 18 ton can take up to six modules for 600 kilometers and 55 ton can take 12 modules for 600 kilometers so let's say if your operation only requires you to travel 100 kilometers then you can go ahead with two modules and in future if the uh, range to come and change you can add one more module in the service center so the whole, whole strategy is to basically make a product which is pro user and that's the current product is also experimenting with so we have 50 kilowatt modules which we are adding and seeing how we can make it with them how do we make them better our battery modules are also slightly different compared to other uh, companies the battery pack all the battery cells are submerged into a liquid and the liquid is pushed in and out of the battery pack to provide the cooling and this liquid also happens to be lithium fire retardant so in case there is a thermal runaway, the fire retardant is around it to diffuse the battery pack also. So the, uh, our trucks at max can carry 600 kilowatt hour of battery in the 55 tonner. That is a lot of battery and uh, it's very dangerous also. So we have to make sure that it's safe because we have Delhi it goes from 4 to 48. We have Jessel made uh, around 45, 46 normally. Then we have Cherapunji always raining and then we have the roads also which are of very weird condition. So each truck has to be designed a way that they can uh, survive the whole of the Indian continent. Okay, so the trucks usually run, run on long routes and carrying lots of tons of weight. And you said that uh, they have the driving range of six hundred kilometers approximately. So, uh, what is the charging time required to charge uh, for a single charge? And secondly, do you think the six hundred kilometer range is enough for commercial vehicle industry? Okay, so uh, what I said is our trucks can go up to 600 kilometer if you add all the six modules, but you can buy a truck only for 100 kilometers also. For example, you are at a port and in the port operation, your task is to go next to the ship, take the container and take it to railway yard. You're not going to travel more than 100 kilometers a day. So it doesn't make sense to go for a 600 also. So depending on the range, what you're looking for, you can buy a specific truck. The max we can do today is 600. Now, Indian trucks on average drive at a speed of 330 kilometer an hour. And uh, the maximum distance they travel is 350 kilometers uh, in one day. So that's that's a number basically we are getting from our partners in logistics and other domain also. So that's where the uh, specification of the products also coming. If you see other manufacturers also, uh, you can put a lot more battery and make the truck run 1000 kilometers as well. But you will not do it because you have to stop and you have to uh, go have some food uh, and uh, take some leak. and. Interesting part is a truck takes around 15 to 20 minutes for a diesel truck takes around 15 to 20 minutes for diesel to be pumped into the tank. That's the amount of time it takes the supercharger to charge the electric truck also. So you're not wasting time if you have to charge. So the operational wise, you're not wasting time if you're on electric and uh, the diesel it's, it's two to three times cheaper also compared to diesel. So if you think from the overall perspective, the range question doesn't come in because that's the range of a diesel truck as well. Okay. And what's the charging time usually for? One charge. Yeah. So the charging time uh, uh, in 15 minutes, we can go up to 70% of the battery pack. So if we have, let's say, a 400 kilometer uh, kind of battery pack, then you can charge up to 300 kilometers in 15 minutes. Okay. So coming to the design of the truck, the design is completely unique and we have not seen something like that before. So what was the thought behind that? So this is uh, something uh, personal, something I've been trying to uh, design for quite some time. Um, so in the first product, which was a tablet for us, a lot of money was spent in the tooling process of the plastic injection mold and the JC, which went inside to hold the battery and all the PCB together. Mm -hmm. Tooling is very, very expensive. And if we uh, think of from a, a let's say automotive perspective, if you have a curved surface, you have to go for a very expensive tooling. And each tool can cost you around 2 to 25 crore. So if you were to design a truck, which is all curve and all following the uh, current market trend, it might just cost around 500 to 600 mm -hmm. crore just to finish the body. And in the effect, in the end, you want to design something which is safe and which is beautiful also. So the design of the truck is actually inspired by origami, where there's no curved surface, everything is flat. That allows us to do a laser cut and then install the body on top. So that allows us to reduce the cost of ma manufacturing production a lot. So it's actually a mix of two things. First of all, designing something which is very unique, not being seen, uh, make the drivers feel like a pilot. They're designing something out of this world, design something which is classic also, that it doesn't look old when we are looking at it in 2030 as well. At the same time, reducing the cost of the overall production and the capex as well. So it has multiple objectives. And I think uh, Edmund as a CDO chief design officer has done a good work there. 
So I believe this is a global product. So where are you manufacturing the product and also are you manufacturing the batteries in house? So battery cells are not made in house. Battery cells are being imported right now. And uh, we're looking for multiple sources for that. We're waiting for 2025 very eagerly because that's the time when uh, Tata, Amaraja, Excite and others are going to enter manufacturing of the cells. Uh, the cell chemistry keeps on changing. So it's, it's uh, in itself an R&D and so it must be done by uh, people who excel at that particular field. Battery packs is something we are manufacturing because we want to make sure that when 3000 odd cell go in one of our battery pack, uh, they are safe and uh, we can charge and discharge them also uh, based on how the truck is being used because the way you charge or discharge a battery pack to, uh, determines the life of a battery uh, cell inside it. So we want to control that particular piece. So battery pack is made uh, in-house. Now manufacturing uh, right now- It has been just assembled in-house. Designed and manufactured uh, by our partners, assembled in-house. So the whole uh, CNC, CNC and you know, for example, the IC circuits will definitely come from uh, the IC manufacturer. Maybe, uh, for example, Infineon can provide some of the components also. So at the component level, you have uh, still India lacking in manufacturing the integrated circuits or the capacitors or the systems which are there, but the whole assembly and manufacturing happens at our center. So the whole design is ours. Uh, the manufacturing will happen in wholesale in the beginning stages because we are looking at uh, starting at a location where the infrastructure is very close by, where all the other automotive partners are also nearby. But after that, we are setting up a plant. Uh, that's something we are still uh, working with governments to figure out where the plant should be. But most probably it's going to be South India only. Okay. What is the kind of investment the company is making into manufacturing and R&D process currently? Yeah, so uh, so when, when, uh, in one of the interviews, our chairman said that uh, we can spend uh, somewhere around 500 to 1,000 crore. Uh, that's the budget that we have, and that's the budget we can spend. But as a company, we're trying to make sure that we don't touch that money at all. We uh, make use of the facility, and uh, the uh, way we are doing our engineering is that, in, in fact, if you come to our office, you'll see that the kind of work we have done, any other startup would have taken some uh, 50 to $60 million to do it. So we're extremely frugal. We test our components till the end before we enter the production also, or even send for prototyping. So the budget is there, but we are planning to uh, break even in the first year, not operationally, uh, fully break even in the first year. Operational break even is easier to achieve compared to the investment side as well. So we are being very cautious of how we spend and where we spend. And more than the money, actually, if you think about it, is what we do with the money is important. I can give you a thousand crore, you can set up a factory with a thousand crore and manufacture 500 trucks, or you can go and partner with one of the best manufacturers of the trucks is so already manufacturing a lot of other OEMs and work with them and save that money. So unless we sell, let's say, 3,000 trucks, we really don't know that people are going to buy our trucks and they don't like the design or there's someone, something else by other OEM which is doing much better than us, right? So we have to commit, the people, have, we have to make sure that our, our products are something which people love before committing that kind of money and uh, just running after valuation. So what is the kind of sales you're looking at? Uh, is there any... Uh research that you've done in the, in the market that this much of units will go and will this be pan india or just around the bangalore and Arka sites first site? yes so currently the truck market at the segment we are working in medium and heavy is around 300 300 000 a year so that's three lakh uh, by 2025 when we are uh, expecting to be able to close everything what we're working on enter production we, we, we believe it's going to start somewhere around one to three percent of the market so you're talking about three to ten thousand electric trucks being sold in 2025 uh, lower range is three, and if all the OEMs come together, that might be 10. And we want to be the majority in this particular segment. And there are four OEMs. You have Ashok Leland, you have Mahindra, you have Tata, then you have Hard Benz, and then uh, you have Tressa. So I'll account uh, at least 21% of this 3,000 or 10,000 or whatever the number may be in that uh, year. Because all of that actually depends on how many charge, what is the charging infrastructure which is there. But that, that's, that's the number which will be. And if you're doing anything low, then uh, we are not making a dent and we are not sustainable in long term. So that's the minimum target that we have to serve. So what's the company's uh, network strength currently? And uh, will you be spreading all over India? So what's the plan around that? So we are going to start from South India, uh, especially uh, the states. Uh, uh, so Maharashtra also included, but uh, so Maharashtra is central, so we can't say just south. But north is something we'll start approaching from 2026 and 27 a period onwards because our service network is mostly going to be in the south and the central of the country. So that's the starting point. And these are the states which are also proactive and uh, proactive for, for the EV strategy as well. Have a much better ecosystem for uh, heavy electric vehicles as well, at least in the policy side. And as we have more states in the north and the east and other region coming up, we are going to expand there as well. 
And most of our sales in, initially is going to be for the A to B market, where we have logistics and other partners as well. And uh, the concentration of these happen to be in Karnataka, in Tamil Nadu, in uh, most of the port cities, uh, port states, uh, where the ports are really good. That's where we're going to start. That's where the demand is. Also, uh, what's going to be the price of the product and when are the deliveries typically? Yes. So now the question is very difficult because if you are going to buy a 100 kilometer truck, it might be cheaper than a diesel truck. If you're going to buy, let's say, a 300 or 400 kilometer truck, it might be slightly more expensive, let's say 25, 45%. If you're going to buy a 600 kilometer truck, it might be double the cost. So it really depends on the uh, range and the uh, spec you're looking at. It's so similar basically, it's similar basically starts, starts from what range? Start from, it starts from 100 kilometer. So if it starts at 100 kilometer and equivalent 55 tonner today is, let's say, a 65, it's going to be way cheaper than that. But if you're looking at, let's say, a 600 kilometer range, it might unless we are buying batteries from India, it's going to be double the cost. Okay. Batteries, make, uh, batteries make 50 to 60 percent of the cost. So that's why it's not in control. So uh, mm -hmm. it's not something like uh, we can magically do reduce the cost. The only way is for the Indian companies to start manufacturing where 30 to 40 percent cost can be reduced. Mm -hmm. Okay. So also, how do you look at the newer technologies that's been coming up, like the ethanol, hydrogen, all those? Tata is also manufacturing trucks around hydrogen. So how do you look at that? Any plans to pour into that also? So uh, I think uh, this is more of a geopolitical uh, uh, nature question, or the strategy is more geopolitical in nature compared to uh, on economics. Uh, you are going to spend 744 kilowatt of energy to generate 100 kilometers of hydrogen distance travel on a bus compared to 144 kilowatt on a solar panel get, getting converted into 100 kilometers. So you're going to spend five times more energy so you can run on hydrogen. So you see on economics, it just doesn't make sense. And we are talking about green hydrogen here. So unless we have some infinite source of hydrogen, which allows us to power these vehicles, I don't see it coming up. Second, we are saying that uh, we are going to put 300 to 600 PSI hydrogen uh, cylinders inside these trucks and vehicles. And we're going to set up an ecosystem in every state in every city unless hundreds of hydrogen power stations to be there to be able to charge the vehicles and you see the problem just magnifies the moment we start thinking on the india scale the small scale mm -hmm. might work but the hydrogen uh, on the economics it just doesn't make sense and there are two ways of looking at hydrogen one is the con conversion of ice engines into hydrogen engines definitely all the ice manufacturers will definitely look at that particular piece because that allows them to survive longer and second is the fuel cell if the fuel cell comes in, then the, any, the only thing which changes for us is the instant battery, we are going to end up adding a fuel cell. So it doesn't change anything for us. But on the economics, it just doesn't make sense that it might help. But on geopolitics, it definitely does. But someone has to invent a new technology to keep the cost of hydrogen down. Okay. And then if, you can, uh, if I can ask around the, what's the future plans of the company, are you planning to foray into the electric two-wheeler and four-wheeler markets also? Any plans around that? Yes, so uh, as I shared, 3% uh, of trucks are causing 40 to 60% of pollution on different scale. Uh, our goal is to make sure that we first solve that particular problem. Uh, okay. Two wheelers, three wheelers is something uh, where you already have a lot of competition. You have 10, uh, 10 to 12 different players already targeting this particular market. We want to make sure that India becomes the global leader in the transportation sector. And uh, we can do what Germans have done with respect to cars in India. We love for India to go outside the country and then claimed the uh, uh, nomination which the German companies have been doing. Our focus is on uh, heavy vehicles, medium vehicles, and in future passenger vehicles, but again, on the luxury side. That's where we like to stick because that's where I think most of the uh, emissions are happening right now. All right, thank you so much for your time to BW. With this, I would like to close the session. Thank, thank you. you.